Greetings this morning from Botswana. Uh, the Lord has, been, has laid this video on my mind, as he had for some time, simply told me that when I was doing videos, uh, not to think about anything fancy, but just to deal with issues that we are dealing with here in Botswana and in Africa. These things do affect the church at large all over the world, to one degree or other, perhaps not as much in some places. But this has to do with uh, the 12 apostles. And as it is, we're asking, you know, that there, why, uh, why is there this apostolic movement at this time? It's very, very big here in Africa. It was something that was new to me when I came here. I was not familiar with it. And so I just want to look at it now for what it is and uh, see what the Bible has to say about it. Uh, first of all, uh, the scripture is pretty clear. There are only 12 apostles. Now we have different lists in the Bible as far as roles in the church, and one of those includes apostles. But the apostles had a limited duration in terms of, you know, the land of the living. What we see today, we still see uh, gifts of discernment, gifts of miracles, healing, uh, such like that. We see evangelists, pastors, teachers, sure, prophecies, sure. But the role of the apostles was limited. These, were, these apostles were directly called by Jesus, and they had seen Jesus. And so that is where we're at. We're going to look at some Bible evidence for this. I actually found four passages in the New Testament that indicated that there are only 12 apostles. So I'm just going to read one of them. Everything else, there, as usual, there will be a list in the description below. So please feel free to look these up. I don't want you to just take my word for it. That's not good enough. You need the word of God. I have from Luke 6.13. And when it was day, he, that is Jesus, and when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve whom he also named apostles. So you see, there are plenty of disciples, but there are only 12 apostles. And from what we hear uh, in our area, um, almost everyone is being called an apostle. I shouldn't say almost everyone, but it, there's no discretion at all. And I just want to look a little bit more deeply. In case any are confused over this issue, you're a disciple of Christ, praise the Lord. Now, who were the 12 apostles? That's another good question. Well, if you want to find a list of the 12 apostles, you will find one place in Matthew chapter 10, verse 2. You can take out Judas Iscariot and put in Paul the apostle, then you would have the 12. I'm going to go through this a little bit, a little bit more just shortly. So again, what qualifies someone as an apostle? I think the most important thing is that Jesus directly chose them. This was from, it was based on his earthly ministry. It was based on his death on the cross for our sins. But it was, all, it was also based somewhat, of course, you would have had to be there to see Jesus in person. And there were a good many who would have seen Jesus in person. We know that there were over 500 at his resurrection that saw him at one time. There were 120 in the upper room. There were 70 in addition to the 12 apostles that had been called. So, yes, some of these no doubt would overlap, but there also may be some that saw him that, that aren't listed here. So plenty of people would have seen him. However, Jesus was choosing the 12 apostles. He chose them directly. So why do we say that it was the apostle Paul? Well, we see this in 1 Corinthians 15, 8. Paul affirms that he was the last. He was the last apostle chosen. So after this, then we might have questions because we read in Acts chapter 1, verses 15 to 26, there seemed to be the apostles that were remaining, the 11, that they were choosing the 12th. As Peter was moved to look in scripture and he saw that there was place for a 12th and that there should be one, he went forward and they had picked two to choose from. These were men who were disciples. Matthias was the one that ultimately they chose. They chose this by lot, by choosing between he and another which one God would want. However, they never prayed beforehand if God actually wanted them to do this. Of course, little did Peter know what Jesus would be doing a short time later. 
And that is he would call the apostle Saul, who was more or less renamed Paul uh, when he came to Christ in Acts chapter 9. And so that is where Matthias stands at. He was not an apostle. He was not chosen by, by God himself, by Jesus himself. And of course, outside of this one passage uh, in Acts chapter 1, he is never mentioned again scripturally. Whereas, of course, Paul was, was used to pen 14 books of the New Testament and whatnot. Now, I'm looking about, are there a reference to any others as apostles? In Acts 14, 14, it refers to Paul and Barnabas together as apostles. Now, there could be the reason for this simply because Barnabas was with Paul and he was doing the work of, apostle, of an apostle. He could have been one that had seen Jesus, perhaps at his resurrection. We don't know exactly when he came to the Lord. We know first accounts of him are in Acts chapter 4. But so it could well be that those that were traveling with the apostles and helping them in their work could have also been referred to as this. The other passage that comes to mind is uh, from Romans 16, 7. It lists Adronicus and Junia. It just says that they were of note among the apostles. It does not specifically say that they were apostles. In other words, these were members of the Church of Rome. These were salutations, as Paul is saying goodbye. So it likely did not mean that they were considered to be apostles. But even if they had been, they either would have seen Jesus or they would have been traveling with the apostles and helping them in their work. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, there are signs for an apostle. Okay, there were signs that followed them. Just one example we could see in signs would have been from Acts 8.18. When Simon the sorcerer was converted, it says how he observed that through the laying on of hands, the apostles were giving the Holy Ghost to others. Well, that would be a prerequisite of being an apostle. They could bestow the gift of the Holy Ghost upon others. Where are we seeing that nowadays? I mean, in truth, where are they meeting all of the signs and qualifications? You aren't seeing it, let alone that the Bible says four times that there were only 12, and it says that Paul was the last. It says that plainly. Another place that it refers to the signs are in 2 Corinthians 12.12. 12. Again, these scripture references will be at the bottom of the page. Please look them up. Uh, I wanted to go through this a little bit quickly. I asked that you would not hold that against me, but I think this is a pretty obvious thing. I think a lot of people know this, but it, it has become an issue in our area that I am living in. Another thing that I wanted to refer to, this really stands out to me, and this is from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 9 to 15. It is saying, For I think that God has set forth us apostles last, as it were, appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. That is, apostles, we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked and buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, and labor, working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat, we are made as the filth of the world and are the offscouring of all things unto this day. Now I'm going to just stop right there because the thing is what we see in these who claim they are apostles today, they are not fulfilling this role. They are using it for gain. They are using it as a status symbol to have a job that is respected and pays money. They are not doing this in any way, being the off-scouring of the world or anything like that. No, not at all. They are more or less preaching the prosperity gospel, and they are reaping the benefits of what they preach. This is a very important passage. It even finishes there with, Though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the, go through the gospel. Even that would diminish from the need to have many apostles. And as a matter of fact, today here, even some of these, some of these are women who they proclaim to be apostles. And of course, uh, women were not called to be 
uh, teachers and leaders in the church of God, as we see from 1 Timothy chapter 2. Again, that scripture will be in the description. So why is this apostolic movement coming now? I think it is a sign of the end times, as we will read in a little bit from some of the prophecies given in 2 Timothy. But I would really ask these apostles, boy, where is the humility? Just listen to this from the Lord Jesus. The kings over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is the chief as he that doth serve. For whether is greater he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth? Is it not he that sitteth at meat? But I am among you as he that serveth. Aren't we supposed to be like Christ? But these people are standing up saying, I'm an apostle, I'm an apostle. I'm just as good as Paul. I'm just as good as Peter. What's the difference? Well, the Bible tells us the difference. And we should be thankful. We should be blessed to be sinners that God uh, bought our salvation for through the blood of his son. And uh, I, I mean, I'm thankful that I'm just not in hell at this moment because that's what I deserve. Uh, being born a child of wrath and being adopted as a child of God. And so we see this as we're looking to uh, the last days. We see that men will have a form of godliness that denies the power. This is again from 2 Timothy chapters 3 and 4. Okay, they are proud, they are boasters, they are covetous, they want money, they want respect. And this is exactly what we're seeing. They are lovers of their own selves. I just wish, I mean, if I saw some pastor actually doing the work of an apostle and he were being called an apostle, you know, that he was actually doing by biblical description, well, you know, I, I wouldn't like that he called himself that, but he would seem to be following the Lord, at least in, in the important, the most important parts, and that is the signs that follow. And number one is the way a person would live their life. But I really hear this coming from Second uh, Timothy chapter 4, and especially verses 3 and 4, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. And so the point is that there are only twelve apostles. This was a limited time thing, and God is very clear about this in his word. There are 12 foundations for the New Jerusalem, and they are the apostles of the Lamb, the 12 apostles. Not the first 12, not some of the 12, not the primary 12, but the 12. There are only 12. And so let us follow God after his word. Let us uh, thank him gratefully for how he has chosen us. And uh, I just pray that this will be a blessing to you if you have had any concerns over this matter. May God bless you.